गवर्नर्स आइलैंड फेरी प्लेस आज हम यहाँ पर सुबह सुबह आए हैं और यहाँ आप देख सकते हो कितने हाई राइज बिल्डिंग्स हैं और यहाँ से अब हम जाएंगे ऑइस्टर कल्चर होम देखने के लिए जो कि ऐसा पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल मेजर भी प्रैक्टिस की जाती है ये देखने के लिए आज सुबह सुबह हम निकले हैं भी देख सकते हैं कितना प्लास्टिक पानी के अंदर बह रहा है हर तरफ यहाँ पर भी वही हालत है चाहे वो छोटा शहर हो डेवलप कंट्री हो या अंदर डेवलप्ड हो या डेवलपिंग कंट्री सबकी एक ही हालत है वही परिस्थिति दिखाने की कोशिश है आप लोगों को ये देखिए सारा प्लास्टिक बह रहा है ये देखिए बड़े बड़े प्लास्टिक भी आ रहे हैं ये हम अपने इंडिया के नदियों और क्रिक एरियाज में दिखा रहे थे और आप यहाँ पर भी वही परिस्थिति देख सकते हैं चारों तरफ आज प्लास्टिक ही प्लास्टिक है जितना बड़ा शहर उतना बड़ा गंदगी और वो गंदगी हर तरफ ही है हम ऐसे दूर से सोचते हैं अमेरिकन कंट्री है या डेवलप कंट्री है तो उनके पास में सारा चीज़ें सही है लेकिन यहाँ पर भी परिस्थिति वही एक सा है
了，我已经走了，走都不来了。Straightforward name, Governor's Island. Yes, Governor's Island. No punctuation. That's the main. <laughs> no, it's no not, it's not possessive. No apostrophe. It's, right, yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. plural, not possessive. Uh -huh. I think it was 67. 67. Okay, I see. Um, I, I should know this. Okay. But, but yeah, no, they, no they were our immediate predecessors. Okay. Uh, there were 10,000 Coast Guard yeah. folks here, um, active duty, and their families okay. lived out here. Oh, and okay. So the entire island. Was Coast Guard. And do we still have the house for the gov the governor used to stay? Um, there, there is, um, there is a house called the governor's house. Oh, okay. Um, governor's house, Agnes. Well, there's an admiral's house. Yeah, I don't think anything that still still says governor. Project. Um, today we we'll just talk through what the Building Nursery Project do and show us, show you guys some of our buildings. Um, have you guys ever heard of the Building Nursery Project? 
Have no. you ever been to any oyster project? No. 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 If you can give us some background of what yeah, you do. Yeah, I would do that. Um, we're going to walk to the exhibit house and then we can talk about what we do. Um, yeah. Of the park. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, not hey. familiar with the educational yeah. part of things, but I'm learning. Yeah, definitely. Really cool. We became like divers, hot hot divers in the Navy, yeah. right? So, the Navy divers, the hot hot divers, they come from high school. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
Tommy. This is cut. This needs okay, to be displayed. Okay, please. Everybody listen up. I know it is a bit of a smaller space. I'm just going to talk to you guys about the little things that we do. So we have a bit of a smaller space. Navigation. So two things. Oysters create an oyster reef just like coral reefs do. And it's a pretty structure. And if you're a boat, you don't want to be slowed down and running over oysters. And then also, as industrialization um, began to increase, bigger boats needed to come in. So they dredge out the harbor to allow those bigger boats to um, come into our ports. So those are the three main reasons. So we can do two things. I can let you walk around for all over the city, right? So we have Canarsie, we have... Canarsie? We have an uh, oyster station, sorry about that, in Canarsie. Oh, yeah? But our oyster resorts on island, we have uh, all over the city, honestly. But, um, so you can't see that. We have um, oyster research stations, which are like smaller structures that we just use to research and learn more about oysters. And I will be showing you guys our shell pile. Uh, which we can talk about later. Um, but yeah, so we talked about oysters and the history that they have in the harbor. Um, why do you think oysters might be environmentally beneficial to the harbor? Any guesses? Okay, I'll give you a hint. Oysters are actually increasing our production of oysters almost double so that we can reach our goal. Good. And why, how is the high school involved, Harbor High School? Yeah. 
Um, so I'm a New York Harbor School alumni. The New York Harbor School is a public high school that focuses on career and hands-on learning. And they have about seven different careers or programs that you can choose from, including we have scuba diving, um, marine biology, aquaculture, ocean engineering, MSC, which is marine system technology, um, vessel operations, and which is driving boats, and marine policy. And the way that it works is the, the Harvard School partners up with the Billy Oyster Project to learn about environmental um, stuff and learn about their program. And then, for example, if you're in agriculture, you will help grow the oysters that we use to restore the harbor. If you're uh, school library, yeah. um, we actually have our students school libraries come out to our oyster reefs to check their health, see how they're doing, um, just monitoring, um, and stuff like that. So each program helps the BOP in some way. So, that's so this, is this is from 9th to 12th grade, right? 9, 10, 11, 12. High, high school. So they don't study history, math, any other subject? No, they do. It's just a, like a regular high school plus the programs. But, and the programs is mainly they go for marine, right? That's a high school. Yeah, so they're all environmentally aquatics related. Okay. And your first year you get introduced to all the programs and then you basically decide like your top three and they usually allocate you one of your top three choices. Okay, all right. So, so, so you can highlight on those, and but but you have, you're predetermined that this is the career path of, of mine. When you yeah. come on, a, on September 11th, we come back on September 11th. You know, Aaron said, Aaron. Yeah. Obviously, we need to school diving equipment, yeah. so we're pretty lucky. And the thing with the Billing Oyster Project, the Harvard School, is that we're trying to cater to underserved communities. Mm -hmm. So people that don't get a chance to come out to the water to see what the harbor's about. I mean, if you think about it, New York City is seen so industrialized and as a city, but we're an island. We have water all around us. And I think that's a big part of history and a big part of being a New Yorker that a lot of people don't know about. So that's kind of our whole thing, and what we want people to learn about it. What was the commute like? I said quickly what is school. What was the commute like when you come to school here? Yeah, so I mentioned it before. I used to live in Brooklyn when I was in school here. So it was about a 30 minute ride on the train. Yeah. And I know, I was but, joking. But, <laughs> here, but here you are not only doing with the oysters. I saw even bivalves are there. Ooh, good observation. Yeah. We can talk about that in a second. Yeah. Um, so let's circle back a little bit. So we talked about how oysters filter the water. I also have two other benefits that oysters um, do for the environment. So one of them is that they're a keystone species. Does anybody know what a keystone species is? That will be a homework. Keystone. Okay, Word. very important. Yes. <laughs> keystone species in an ecology. Think yeah. of a bridge like a... A keystone species, the basic definition, is a species that has a lot of influence or a big impact on the overall environment or ecosystem. So it's a species that, for example, if I take out oysters, that ecosystem is going to collapse. Mm -hmm. So they're, as the name says, very key to that ecosystem. So oysters are a keystone species, and the main um, service that they do is that they provide habitat for their species. So just like coral reefs provide habitat for fish and critters, oysters also have a 3D structures and they provide habitat for fish, uh, crabs, and a bunch of other stuff, algae, a bunch of stuff. And then the third and last benefit is that since the 3D structure and they go along the shore, they can actually help humans by preventing flooding. So when a big flooding comes along or like a big wave comes up to the shore, if we have an oyster bed, um, the oyster bed kind of acts as a speed bump and it kind of um, stops the momentum of the wave and disperses it. Well, that's so, good for a tornado. Yeah, so it's actually good When you have the surge. Yeah, yeah, like the ocean, yeah. yeah, and storms. So one of the things that we talked about was during the sandy, sandy mm -hmm. storm, yeah. we had oysters, yeah. the flooding would have been so much more minimized. So um, sandy was a was, oh my god, 2011, right? 2012. Yeah. 2012, yes. That's the time I was the first I saw what is in a hospital. Yeah. Oh, okay. really? I, I had such a bad uh, nervous breakdown for a week. Us, you know, every, we had power outage. We had... Um, 20 in the Palgar. We had a one, and a half, one and a half feet of rainfall in one day. And the next day was bombs. Everybody was back to normal. Yeah, because and you know what, this like is... That, you know? Somebody was telling me, like, the city is actually... What we saw, this is a great thing yeah. I learned, yes. Especially Hello. <laughs> well, this is Jeff. Hi, this is the principal of the New York Harbor School. How you doing? Uh, you're doing amazing oh, work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the kids are. The kids are. I just let them. I let them play around the island. <laughs> the school 
since 2015, and it's great to have you all out here. But uh, we, our school is pretty unique. We have eight different career and technical education programs, all dedicated to support the Billion Oyster Project and the work that they're doing to restore the New York Harbor. Um, so it's pretty amazing work. We don't play pretend here at Harvest School. We actually are doing work. So we're not like just writing letters to Congress or, you know, just writing mm -hmm. letters or just like wishing and praying that, you know, change will happen. We're actually implementing change on a daily basis. So uh, you're getting a chance to see here. You're also going to the Mass Center mm -hmm. as well. So you'll be able to see where our students work in the hatchery, where they're growing the oysters. You'll get to see our professional scuba diving, where the students go under the water. You'll see you know, students and training uh, to drive boats on the vessel operations. And, and, is that going to be one or a simulator? Um, so you'll see a place where the students can learn how to um, drive a boat even indoors. Like you're a high school student where you're actually making an impact. I am a Harvard School alumni and I have come now and I have seen how things have changed. Like we're seeing whales and dolphins, so it really makes a difference to see that something that you did in high school is making an impact. Um, I was well, it rains that day, you might be seeing garbage in the near harbor, which is why we have to put oysters in so it could filter. Well, you can tell by the weather season, you will tell how much rainfall you have, you know, can predict, you know. Right. But we have a project in India, we go to, we, we have installed like 19 weather stations in India, so we can look at our cell phones and see what's the weather in oh, Maharashtra or Gujarat or nothing. See the hatchery then, yeah. how yeah. they're growing the yes. oysters and how the students are growing the oysters yeah. and then, you know, the eco-dock, because after they grow in the hatchery, then they go out to the eco-dock into the harbor, and you see that all right Yeah, there. that I want to see. Where our boats are hooked up to, and then yeah. they grow there, and then we take them out to the Okay. And the yeah. students are monitoring all of that. And, you know, so that process, if it can be seen, because that will be more worth coming here. Right. Because be when we talk, yeah, thing. when we are talking about billion oysters, right. so that would be worth yeah. watching. Yeah. So today, yeah, we're going to talk a lot about it. When you come back, you'll definitely see more. That will be. Uh, that will be yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. We have a background now. We understand. Right. Because I was. algae and all the little uh, microscopic stuff that's in the water and they actually have these things called labial props which act as their lips and with their labial props they decide hmm, what's yummy food versus oh no I don't want that and they can ingest some of the pollution that's one way they do it and then they also kind of taking the water um, through their labial props and then they take in that bad stuff and it kind of sinks and gets trapped in the sand so that's actually how they're helping with pollution because they trap things like nitrogen or the bad contaminants um, deep in the water. Uh, what is the major difference between the algae and the oyster? Algae, algae also filter the water. Ooh, no. so algae I is... It... <laughs> Ma'am, actually algae also about the my region or how much I read. Algae right. also filter the water. Okay. Okay, so I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, algae are... The yeah, so there is like Yes. Pass it on. Um, this is kind of heavy, so I don't know if I'm going to pass this. Is this bio rock? 
Yes, so this so, is eco concrete. Eco concrete. Let me do this again. Because we're trying to find ways that we can artificially grow these oysters. Um, so, I forgot who asked the question. You asked the question, come up together and form that barrier from the flooding and the storms and everything like that. So, these are some of the ways that we do it. We excuse me, have um, been working on our designs over the years. So we have pavians, we have this, we have... So obviously we want oysters to clean the water, but we also want to educate the public. So one of the things that the Billion Oyster does and partners with another organization is to check for a harmful bacteria in the water um, to tell people if the water is swimmable or not. The bacteria is a bacteria that's found in your stomach and it's basically harmful to, it's basically there in the presence of uh, human waste. Um, and we just do this to let the public know when it's accessible to swim. So you can swim in the harbor. Um, we have all over the city, there's like beach access or like open access um, in the water after it rains. So we tell people that if it had rained in the first, in the last three days, you can't swim in the water. And again, this is because we have the combined sewage overflow issue. And you can read about it here, and this is all the equipment that we use. We have selected an adult male and an adult female um, that are genetically stable, genetically good, right? We want a species that is going to survive the harsh weather in New York City. Um, and the way the, the fertilization process works is that oysters will shoot out, shoot out their sperm and egg into the open water column. So they do external fertilization. Um, and then eventually that sperm and the egg meets in the water. Right? Uh, once that happens, the egg gets fertilized um, and it became, becomes a larvae. So when oysters are larvae, which is at this stage right here, mm -hmm. they're called spat, S-P-A-T. Um, I don't know what we call them that. <laughs> That's just what they're called. And they have this little foot that kind of looks more like a tongue to me, but they um, swim around. They're not very good swimmers. They are basically at the mercy of the current, but they do have a little foot that does help them out a little bit. And what they're trying to do is try to find another shell to settle on. So oysters are sessile species, which means they don't move. So once they settle down, they stay there for the rest of their life until they die. Um, and they're trying to find a substrate that is calcium carbonate. So the reason why you saw other bivalves is because other bivalve shells are made out of calcium carbonate. So clams, sea scallops, and oysters are all made out of the same material. So an oyster larvae or baby would set on a sea scallop, on a clam, oyster. It thinks it's all the same. So that's the reason why we have other shells. How do they get stuck on the I think it's more of a chemical process. I'm not that familiar with it, um, but I think they they chemically like attached. Talked about um, the people ate them, they got sick. So all of a sudden, nobody wanted to eat them. I have to tell my sister. But, um, <laughs> that's what she's yeah. ordering every time we go to a restaurant. Well, so. No, no, oysters are really good. Oysters? They are very cheap uh, protein. Uh, and they are supposed to be very good uh, protein source. Good. We must eat it. It's really good. Yes. But only we have to ensure that it should be from non-polluted zones. And how you will make out that also when you look at the gills. They become black in color. When they become blackish, that means there is a lot of ac accumulation. Yes. Otherwise, these are the indicators, like when you take, and when you take, like you can smell it also. Like if you are a regular eater, you will know the smell of that uh, oyster. Yeah. Okay, you will come to know whether it is polluted or not. So, so then you should not. Otherwise, you should. Soup, it's a very good. My lentil soup is good in protein. I, I'm <laughs> <laughs> but pro this is also very good. No, no, oysters no, I've never are good. Tasted it. I think it's a very mm. particular. Have you had oysters? Yes, yes. Like yeah, them? yeah, I like them. I think it's a very particular thing. Like you either really like it or yeah. you don't. I had one time, um, what is that called? Calamari? Calamari? Calamari, what is that? Squid. That's the way the oysters live. And then once they're old enough, like uh, more resistant to the weather and stuff like that, they get introduced to reefs or they go where they, whatever project we're working on. So that's kind of like how we grow the oysters and how we put them out. Any questions? We have sites all over the city. So, Sun Island, we have one big reef. But as you like, as you told us before, like the, these are polluted, uh, like uh, the water. The bodies. water is polluted. Is how that you a... are doing this reproduction? 
<laughs> yeah, so the reproduction part happens at a hatchery. So it's in a tank. It's not out in the water. So, so and you are taking these oysters from those uh, water bodies only? Um, so the oysters we bought from farmers. Like the parent oyster, right? The one that we used to create all the babies were bought from a farmer. So that they're genetically good, right? Because we don't want oysters that are not going to survive the harsh water. Correct? And then we create babies and we keep creating more and more babies. But how is that water you get? Clean water from where you get? Mm. So, again, the water is not that dirty. Okay? It is polluted, but it's not that dirty. So they do survive in it. Uh, we just get it from the harbor and we just use a chlorine filter. Um, <laughs> Sea water with chlorine filter, will it clean the pollutants? Yeah, actually, don't quote me on that. I don't know if it's a chlorine. I think it's just an open water system, if I'm honest. So I think we just take water. So maybe water. that you people are selecting some site where there is less pollution and getting water. I don't know. How are you doing? You might have to ask the hatchery when you come back, but honestly, yeah. that eleven. So you are not involved in uh, the process of culturing? Not anymore. I used to be an aquaculture student, so when I was doing that, I was, I was a hatchery assistant. <coughs> <clears throat> All right. Um ये रही गवर्नर आइलैंड की हार्बर एरिया और अभी हम लोग बिलियन ऑइस्टर प्रोजेक्ट देखकर बाहर निकले हैं और अब यहाँ पर हार्बर में घूमते हुए यहाँ की पोल्यूशन की क्या मतलब है क्या सिचुएशन है वो देखने की कोशिश यहाँ देख सकते हैं रॉक्स के ऊपर एलगी ये देखते रहे एलगी कहाँ गए एलगी मैन पीछे पड़ा था उसको बोल रॉक्स के ऊपर कितनी एलगी ग्रो हुए हैं देखो वॉट आर वी डूइंग ये देखो इनका इनका देखो वो कह रहे हैं ना ये देखो ड्रेनेज ओपनिंग दिख रहा है 
पूरे शहर का ड्रेनेज ओपनिंग ऐसे खोल देते हैं समुद्र में हाँ और फिर इसी में अगर वो बोल रहे हैं कि पोल्यूशन हो रहा है तो पहले तो ये ड्रेनेज को डाइवर्ट करने की ज़रूरत है ना तो वो कहते हैं कि ओवरफॉल का वो ये कर रहे हैं लेकिन ये तो डायरेक्ट ड्रेनेज ओपन है यहाँ नहीं वो बता खुद वो अभी सोच के देखो हम लोग सोचते हैं हमारा देश अंडर डेवलप्ड है करके हम लोगों के पास में चीज़ें नहीं है ये तो डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज़ है ना तो इनका इनका भी तो वही हालत है ये तो उल्टा हम लोगों के यहाँ तो फिर भी थोड़ा अभी हमने दिखा है ना कितना प्लास्टिक प्लास्टिक सब फ्लोट हो रहा है दुनिया भर का प्लास्टिक भी फ्लोट हो रहा है ड्रेनेज खोल के रखा है और ये हार्बर एरिया हार्बर सबसे ज़्यादा न्यूट्रेंट रिच और अगर वो कल्चरिंग भी जो कर रहे हैं ना कल्चरिंग भी इसी के बाजू में ही करते होंगे और यही पानी लेके करते हैं वो बाजू में करते हैं और यही सेम पानी अलग पानी थोड़ी लाते हैं का पानी बिल्कुल गंदा है देख रहे हो कितना ड्रेनेज लाइन वगैरह सब खोल के रखा है इसके अंदर ये नाम क्या है ये डाटा है सबसे ज़्यादा गंदगी ये जो ये जो ये वॉल्स होते हैं ना इसमें ये जो निशानी दिख रहा है ना अभी जो तुमको आइस्टर्स दिखा रहे थे वो देखो जैसे वो वॉल्स पे वाइट धब्बा दिख रहा है ना वैसे वो चिपके रहते हैं अभी उन्होंने कुछ वो एंटी बायोफॉलिंग और ये लगाया होगा यहाँ पे वो आइस्टर्स दिख नहीं रहे हैं बहुत चलता है यार एक मैं जरा साइड में जा रहा मुझे तो मेरे कैप्चर करने थे थोड़ी सी चीज़ें देखा इनका एलगा भी हो रहा है बट एलगा ही वाटर आइसिंग भी हो रहा है बट ये यूज ज़्यादा क्या 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 वापस 
बेबी टिश्यू नहीं बेबी टिश्यू का कैसे है तो कौन कहा बेबी टिश्यू कैसे तो आप इसी जनरेट करते हो हां इसी चीज से तो नहीं जनरेट नहीं जिसने कहा अच्छा अरे अभी हमने तुमको वो स्टेजेस नहीं दिखाए हां तो फिर इसमें से थोड़ी बेबी तैयार होंगे जब एक बार कुक हो गया ये सब तो अभी इसका पाउडर वगैरह बनेगा इसका पाउडर बन के मेडिसिन में यूज होगा पाउडर के हां वही यूज होगा इसका थोड़ी वापस से इसका कल्चरिंग थोड़ी होता है ये कैसे कल्चरिंग होगा नहीं इसका यूज है ना इसका यूज बाकी प्रोडक्ट्स के लिए है नहीं फर्दर कल्चरिंग के लिए नहीं है इसका What is this process going here with this? It's a machine that helps cleaning the oyster. So when it's turned on, there's a tubular structure and it spins around. Huh. And it basically gets rid of all the dead debris. So you can see a lot of the bottom. Okay. Okay. And it's been sitting here for like three hours. Okay. So it's like three hours. Okay. 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 Oysters are, are more wrong. I mean, mm, okay. smooth, right? Okay, so That's oyster the of the is the right answer. And some of the ways we can tell it's an oyster is compared to this shell, they grow, uh, they grow asymmetrical. So oh, shell, oysters are always asymmetrical. Yeah. Oh, so they grow very irregularly too. They have a lot of lines and bumps. And then another way we can tell it's an oyster shell is, do you see this dark mark right here? Yeah. So this is a scar from where the abductor muscle. was attached to the oyster. Mm. So you can always tell us an oyster by that must by that scar as well. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so I have How about this? Well, we'll make make everybody guess. I think it is. It looks different than this one, right? Right? Yeah. Looks different? Yeah, definitely. Well, this one has more deposit. It looks the same. This one has the deposit. Yeah, that is asymmetrical. Yeah. This is round and Okay. So it's okay. very symmetrical, right? Yeah. It's You can feel it. It's smoother than this yeah, one, right? Yeah. Smoother. Do I feel it? And ready? Yeah, this one's smoother than this one. So what do we think this one is? Again, our options are oyster, a clam, or a scallop. Clam. Almost all. Ooh, I heard clam. Yeah. Okay, so it is a clam, and they're kind of like cousins of the oyster. It is a different species, but they are still bivalve, and people do eat them as well. And then the last one, the big guy. It must be a what? Scallop. A scallop. Okay, we can pass this one around in a second. But the reason you can tell it's a scallop, they can vary in size, so they can be this large or this little as well. It's because do you see these part? This one's kind of broken. But do you see this area right here? This is called a wing, and that's how you can tell it's a scallop. None of the other shells have this. And it's because have you ever seen a scallop like swimming around? So scallops move. Um, oysters do not move. Clams can move a little bit, um, and they kind of open their shell a little bit, and they like go like this. It's really funny. But if you want to pass it. Around. Healthy for the environment. No, eco concrete means with what uh, the thing it has been made. What is the Contained raw material? Also. I think it's Components. like. Components. Honestly, I don't know. I think it's like plant material. Ah, uh, so I'm plant sure material. Thing. That's what I'm thinking. When it is here, sure. here lot of things are being made. So is it all out of the clams only? Because here they have packed the clams and kept now. So that is all why right. I was thinking whether with that product.
This is all of uh, Harbour School only. Uh, not the, the Harbour School is at the other end of the island. This only, we don't see the Harbour School at the other end. No, no, this, this particular work, it, it belongs city, to, belongs to the city. City, but the Harbour School is in charge of the building as a project. They do the work for that project. Okay. But this property belongs to New York City. Yeah. That's a new model, Snehal. We have schools uh -huh. focusing on industry, like IBM has a P-Tech schools. Yes, yes. They focus on only IBM careers. Yes. SUNY Maritime. Yeah, SUNY Maritime. Uh, only on India. Yeah. school in Brooklyn, that all the focusing on his things. With yeah, technology. now that is also started in India, that way. Yeah, they call it P-Tech. Yeah. Okay. Long Island City. Okay. And that's when, and then it becomes Hudson again. Okay. So that's how it works. So, so it's like little tributaries, like we have the Bushwick Inlet. Okay. We have like a little things that break off too. Okay. And uh, this is what we see is which city? This is Brooklyn. So this is Red Hook. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of uh, the drainage pipeline, which are opening here. So, Just now I saw bigger drainage pipeline. Yeah, so even when you go out to some of our sites, you huh. would see huh. that they are switch huh. lines, and that's the issue. That when the because you know why? It's because the combined switch huh. overflow. Huh. When it rains even more than one inch, which is basically nothing, hmm. it overflows, and hmm. all that pipe, all those pipes, bring the sewage into the water. Oh. So that's that's the issue. Uh, okay. Dr. Cheng Yu Wang from our department, she does a lot of research in that area. Okay. She does. She has like eight papers on phosphorus and, and CSOs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot about the like nutrient pollution. So we are going to meet her. She's in our department. She's part of our department. Oh, I didn't meet She's her. She's an adjunct faculty in our department. Yeah. Okay. May I invite so because everybody? I saw this harbor water is very very dirty, very very dirty. From there I was yeah, observing. So what do you mean by dirty? Dirty you mean the color? Maybe no, color a, also. Color At the same like. time, I saw a lot of plastics and okay. a lot of garbage and yes. other things so also. So the plastic, yeah, for sure. But the color, it's naturally green because huh. of the algae. I think a lot of people uh, no. associate it with dirty, yeah. but uh, it's not necessarily dirty. It's just, it's algae. It's a lot of nutrients. It's flourishing. As you are saying correct, algae, may, uh, algae I could see a lot of algae also. Yeah. But at the same time, when I was on that side, Trash. I could see uh, trash. Trash was there, uh -huh. but at the same time, as I said, the drainage water is also how the pipeline is open. So yeah. these are the things already there. So we cannot say that the water is not dirty. No, we cannot say it's not dirty <laughs> because algae is there means it is not dirty. It's not like that. See, <laughs> lot of uh, um, yeah, weed, weed algae is there. That is why. <laughs> which you see more on the polluted waters. How are the waters in India? They are also polluted. It's across the globe. It is the same. Mm -hmm. Every the uh, water body population is, of people, right? You guys yeah, have, yeah. Of course, that is there high population, right. but at the same time, uh, there is uh, across the globe it is ne negligence towards the yeah. uh, water bodies. Yeah, it's hard. It's a lot of with government, because because mainly issues. no no because mainly our issues are that we are opening all the drainage sludge lines are all in water bodies. Uh, okay. 
drainage pipelines. Yeah, gotcha. And at the same time, we don't have a proper solid waste management. Gotcha. So during monsoon and all, like suppose now here, this, uh, uh, this uh, things are there, mesh is there. So they will not allow things to go inside mm. many a times. But if it is not there, all things wash away that way. It's in everywhere the it's hard situation being in this is. Field. So yeah, many... see here you can see this uh, this kind of a water, like foam kind of a water. That also is an indication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Really nice. Because a lot of ingression is also there. Sorry. I think a lot of uh, uh, that you said Hudson is. It continues in the Hudson here mm -hmm. also in the ups upside also. Yeah. So a lot of I think the, yeah. when the capacity of water carrying capacity that also reduces then ingression is also yeah high. and then we're also like the, uh, this area brings out a lot of trash into the ocean because hmm. this is right brackish water is where huh. fresh water and yes, ocean yes, meets yes. and eventually it turns into ocean yeah so that's also a bigger issue yes <laughs> yes <laughs> there's a bunch of things honestly but yeah. you know, the thing is like you so we cannot, that is why we cannot claim anywhere today that the water is clean, <laughs> as much you will say. You know, you have to, I think the point was yeah. that it is cleaner than yeah. it used to be. Yeah. And we want people to realize, yeah, yeah, it looks dirty and it's to some aspect it is. Hmm. There's a lot of life in there, you know. Yeah, very when people think dirty, Absolutely. they Absolutely. think there's nothing in the water. Nothing in the water. Yeah. Um, like we saw whales are coming back, we have dolphins coming back. Okay, so, so that is an indication that, that it is things are going clearer. better, you know. Okay. It's not like <laughs> yeah, it's like it is. It is like more of consciousness is developing among the people now. Yeah, yeah. Scientists have also become more uh, like uh, application based uh, work mm -hmm. is more going on. Application engineering type, and yeah. that is why uh, things are becoming better. And the environmental field is growing. Conservation yeah. is yeah, growing. Yeah, 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 a lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah. People are realizing yeah. like yeah. Now you have is. to do it now. Yeah. So this side it is Brooklyn yeah. and here we are coming Manhattan. towards Manhattan. So this is called okay. Lower Manhattan. Lower Manhattan, okay. So, so that means from there only we can see now Hudson this side. Yeah. Hudson so will be starting from here or from where? So the Hudson, you hmm. can't see it from here. No? It's okay. at the end of Queens, right? Okay. And at the start of Brook, uh, the Bronx. Okay. So you can't see it. So that that part. I have seen from Bronx, I have seen. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Hudson so and Harlem both. Yeah. Oh, here's yeah. the bridge. So this is the yeah. green one, Brooklyn yeah. Bridge, right? Okay. And then the blue one is the Mahai Bridge. Okay. So, why don't you... So we're going to be in this here, right here. Where? Here, right here. Here, what it is? I just will have a look. I think this is showing history. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. Let's just have a really wait right here. Yes, okay? yes, yes. Thank you. I'll be right back. Such type of display boards everywhere gives a lot of information and this is what is required in many of our tourism places.
tower where the 26/11 happened and we remember how it was very scary scene so this side it is manhattan you can see this freedom tower the tall one with the arrow like on top so this side it is manhattan and this side it is brooklyn so remember don't let go yes 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 sure <laughs> just cuz i don't want any loose packets acha these these ropes are for yeah. that only so these the, all the ropes these uh, i also research okay so these are only for research for showing the public so mm -hmm. these are and then do you see that floating dog yeah, yeah. and this one yeah we have um this is where we put the nursery okay so these things have oyster cages attached to it okay so these are uh, the floaters yeah they're like buoys so if you so we can uh, see it from there and we pull them up but you cannot um see them from the top of our chair okay all right so who's going to help me pull the cage yes mm. you might get a little dirty you have a white shirt on are you sure yes i'm sure <laughs> please yourself you want to pull on the blue thing pull it pull it pull it man so, ah see it's coming Like Use your strength. Yeah, Use come on. Feel strong, right? Yes. Okay, watch out, watch out, watch out. Are we done? All right, everybody. This is an oyster cage. Hmm. It's very dirty, as you can see. But yeah. it's actually a good thing. We have a bunch of plants, um, barnacles growing on here. So it's a great ecosystem for a lot of creatures. So I'm just going to open up the cage. Wrestle with these things a little bit. Okay. Now I got it. Okay. Perfect. All right. Now it's open, and everybody can take a look. It's just a bunch of oysters. There's dead oysters and live oysters. Mm -hmm. So we can go over how you can tell if an oyster is alive or dead. If the shell so is open. So I will go ahead and yeah. pass them around. For you guys upper kelam is out this one is live this yeah. one's a nice cluster, cluster which is what we're looking for because we yeah. want them to build that 3d structure for yeah. habitat yeah. so you can pass it around please so this is uh, this is grown inside this box yeah so this stays so here at forever. what stage they were in this box um they were put in here when they were still baby oysters but they were at least a year old okay So now, uh, uh, how are we going to account for that? Uh, why the death, and how, uh, like uh, in the percentage wise, how much is the death rate here? Uh, I am not sure, but we do an annual report that you can look at on our website, okay. and that has all the research that we do for the year. Okay. Um, that's more of the restoration team um, department, and they account for things like predators. Like there's this natural predator called the oyster drill, and it lives little holes. So if we see that, then we can. Uh, we can speculate that that's why they died, mm -hmm. but um, we do not do a lot of testing because. So now, yes. after you collect this, uh, they are they are not used. Uh, uh, they are not used at all for eating purpose. No, never, never for eating. Okay. So you. So after they grow, where you where, where, where you take it then to that center from where we came? Is this um, no, these stay here because these are just for restoration educational purposes. Okay. Is it open or closed? Uh, I don't know. Pull it. It's Try close. to pull it apart. It's, it's Can you close, pull it yeah. apart? No. Then it's closed. Okay. That means it's alive. <laughs> Should I give? All right. Yeah, you can put it back. So sometimes we get fish or crabs. So that's what I'm looking for. ये ये पकड़ना जरा एक ग्लव पकड़ लो मैं हाथ में एक लेती हूं इस दिस द लाइफ वन या या कैन आई टेक अ लुक एट योर्स ओके सो हाउ डू वी टेल इन ओयस्टर इज लाइव विद द अपर कैल इट्स क्लोज एंड इट इज क्लोज राइट सो 
an oyster will now open the shell because that's how it protects itself. So even if you pry it, even with a knife, it won't open. If it opens, that means you have to close the oyster. Oh, okay. And so, how does the water travel go inside? Yeah, so so this is called a hinge. So this is the back part of the oyster, it's where the two shells meet. And then this is called the umbo, this is the front of the oyster. And the oyster will open its mouth a tiny little bit just to let water in. And that's how it gets open. open. It's a type of tourniquet. So they're in the same family as cnidarians, which are jellyfish, um, and they're called sea squirts. And the reason they're called sea squirts, they're sea sea squirts. So sea as the sea water, and squirts as the squirts. Okay. And I've seen them before in Brooklyn. Beaches, yeah, they're yeah. all over. Yeah. Um, they look like water jets up in the air like that. Yeah. So the reason they're called sea squirt is because. Yeah. Oh, oh. Did you okay. see that? <laughs> okay. Right. Did you guys it again? Wanna look? So, sea squirts because they square. <laughs> I told you you were going to get dirty. Squirt. <laughs> did everybody okay. get to see that? Okay. Sorry. I, I, didn't, I didn't do it. Yeah. You can do it. I did it on purpose. Don't yeah, show, show, show for the sand, not me. Show for the sand. See? Squirts. They squirt water. They squirt water. Well, well, now I squished it all out, so now it's not going to come out. But yeah, they're. Yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So they are uh, fowlers. No, they're a tourniquet. Tourniquet. Like, uh, similar to like sponges. Okay. Okay. But it's not the same family. Okay. When did you put this case inside? Is it water? I can look at the tag. And what do you put this inside? Like only shells? No, so it was just shells that has spat baby oysters okay. on them. And you, you only close it or just shells? What do you With, mean? Like, uh, how did you put, like, if you have this, how did you put that baby? Yeah. So, remember how we saw that picture yes. and it was a little baby and it had yes, a foot? Yes, yes. And we talked about the foot attaches to the shell. So they start growing close. So that's how the two shells come out, right? So like, if I was fat when I was really little, I started right here and I grew out this way. Does that make sense? I want to know. Yes, yes. Okay. And then they just kind of grow on top of each other, honestly. Like, can I tell you, like, this is one oyster. This is one oyster. This is just an oyster shell. But that right here is an oyster. So So oh, yeah, boy, drink. Yeah. Okay. What is that yellow building? Uh, 